So for this video, we're going to use the ST12, ST10 Plus, and the ST10 to fly the unique Q500 drone. Then we'll look at the flight data from each of these controllers, and I'll show you how to write an application where we can view the data in Bing Maps. Wait, no, hold on. Okay, wait. I'll also show you how to use Google Earth. All right. The ST10 has a smaller screen than the ST10 Plus, and the ST12 has two additional channels. All three controllers have the same Android, kernel, and hardware versions. The nice thing is that all three controllers can control the drone and the 1080 and 4K camera. So for our first test, we're going to use the ST12. Let's try this out. Wasn't that cool? Now I told my video editor to only use the most exciting clips out of that flight. So, on to the next one. ST10 Plus. Let's see how that goes. I forgot to turn on the mic on the camera, so please enjoy the simulated but realistic drone sounds. If you're wondering why the lights are flashing, it's because the battery's almost dead. Oh, we're shaking. That flight was spectacular. Now, for our final controller, the ST10, the old school one. Let's see how this goes. Perfect! Now that we have some good data, all we have to do now is retrieve it. To do that, open up the back of your controller, remove the battery, and there's a little SD card here that you can get. BAM! Here I have all the data from the ST10, 10 Plus, and the ST12. The only difference I see is the ST10 does not have a flight encrypted log, and that might be because the new controllers have a warning on the back that say do not remove SD card when flying, warranty is void when flying without SD card. But the white controller does not have this. This encrypted log allows Unique to provide a crash forgiveness warranty. With this log, they can discover whose fault it was. Another difference is the ST10 only has telemetry data, while the ST10 Plus and the ST12 have remote and telemetry data. Getting back to the data, we have the controller log, which records all of the controller input by the user. We also get the remote GPS log, which tells you the Latin log where you were controlling the drone. And finally, we get the telemetry data from the drone. This gives you a lot of data about the drone, not only where it was, but the battery voltage, the pitch and roll, and lots of other things. Lastly, the controllers also record video. This is a video that was on the controller screen when you were flying. I think it's really cool that Unique thought to put all this data on there. The controller I'm using, I purchased off eBay. It looks like the person that owned it before me was part of the film crew for American Ninja Warrior. Here you can see him getting some opening shots for the event. Towards the bottom, you can see where the obstacle course is. But as you would guess, the video that was recorded on the controller is much lower resolution. Here's a comparison of the controller video and the video from the camera. 
The video on the controller is probably useless for anything but a log. If you're wondering how I'm playing the videos on the controller, I'm using VLC with a special tag in the shortcut that says DMUX equals H264. Then all you have to do is drag and drop and it plays. This is the Bing map code that I promised. If you want to make a custom app to see the flight path of your drone, then Microsoft Bing makes it really easy to do this. The full version of this tutorial is about 15 minutes and is in the description below. But as you can see, it's pretty cool for less than 100 lines of code. This next part is how to translate your drone paths into KML, so you can display it in Google Earth. Google Earth is pretty cool because you can see it in three dimensions, and as you can see here, I wrote the word hi. While doing this, I was curious if the drone's altitude and Google's altitude matched up to what I was seeing. The size of the houses seem pretty matched up here, but Google says I'm at 581 feet, while my drone said I was at 367. When I get Google down to 367 feet, the size of the house looks like this. Am I doing something wrong? Let me know. So if you're not into writing code to see your drone path, then another app that you could use is called Power BI for business intelligence. It makes it really easy to import the path, and then you can assign attributes to each data point. Here I'm changing the color based on the voltage of the battery. There's a lot of other data visualizers that you can use, like line graphs, pie charts, and all kinds of stuff. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was three different ways that you could look at your flight log data. My personal favorite was with KML and Google Earth because you have the three-dimensional view. For my next video, I'm pretty excited about because we will be intercepting the signal from the controller and doing a real-time mapping. That's one thing that these controllers are lacking right now is an aerial view or real-time mapping view. So, please look forward to that one. One way you'll know when that video is done is by subscribing to this channel and clicking on the little bell. Then you'll get notified when the new video is posted. As always, please leave any questions or comments below, or you can email me at this address here. So thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to check out the Bing tutorial.